So when considering a diagnosis of hemochromatosis, the two critical indices are one, ferritin, which is going to be elevated, and two, transferrin saturation. And the cutoff here, and this is this is based on iron divided by TIBC. Sometimes mm-hmm. the lab will give you transferrin saturation. But once you get those numbers, if it's greater than 45%, you start to worry about hemochromatosis. You'll see greater than 50% for men. But if you can only remember one number, let's go with 45%. When I look mm-hmm. at the CBC and the liver enzymes, I'm mainly using this to start calculating in my mind the probability of cirrhosis. Is the AST greater than the ALT? Has the platelet count dropped below 150, below 100? I'm starting to think, is the game afoot in terms of severe liver disease for this patient? It helps me prioritize how important it is to come up with a firm diagnosis for them as well. And one other thing I wanted to ask you about, because I hadn't been trained to look at this, the um, I think it was the RBC volume, is that what it was, the that they were talking about above a certain cutoff might might tip you in one direction. Do you pay much attention to that? So I think that uh, this is one of these things that has stuck around for a while where you will see changes in MCV that uh, are, are uh, that were classically associated with hemochromatosis, but red cell indices are neither sensitive nor specific for the kind of thing that we're hunting for, particularly in the outpatient clinic setting. Okay. So stick to ferritin and uh, transferrin saturation. And then when we're looking at the CBC and the liver tests, we're just sort of keying in, could this person have cirrhosis? I like, I like it. Paul, I see you. You look very pensive. I know you, you have something to say. Yeah, I don't. I feel like I just. I, I. I feel kind of at sea here. The opposite of you, Wado, where you're like you're. It seems like you're always wondering, could this be hemochromatosis? I'm reading through the pre- pre-reading. I'm like, oh god, have I missed hemochromatosis thirty seven thousand times? And then these indices are often kind of muddled, and I'm and often so many of our patients have predisposing factors that could sort of be other causes of abnormal liver enzymes and elevated ferritin and that kind of stuff. I guess I what I'm wondering, I guess is. Is there any particular patient or phenotype like, that is like slam dunk home run where you think, well, this is someone I need to test for hemochromatosis or like, like what, before you even get labs, is there something that raises your clinical suspicion for it? Or is it just one of those things that you do for completion's sake? Yeah. So I am more likely in the first visit to check iron indices in somebody who lacks classic risk factors for what is best described as dysmetabolic iron overload syndrome. So people who I know are not drinking, I have biomarkers that prove they're not drinking alcohol to excess. I know that this person doesn't have diabetes or severe metabolic syndrome. But if I have mildly elevated liver enzymes, I'm going to focus on global uh, liver health and lifestyle changes in hopes that I can improve those liver enzymes. And I use time to be the greatest arbiter of the diagnosis, where if that person uh, stops drinking or cuts back, or if they lose weight and they still do not drop their ALT or do not drop their ferritin, then I start to look into it a, a little more closely. But I have seen over the course of 6, 12 months, people take ferritins in the uh, low thousands to the low hundreds simply with lifestyle change, validating this approach. Because common things being common, the mo- it's much more likely that their elevated ferritin is going to be caused by the dysmetabolic iron overload syndrome. Do we understand why that happens? Why the person with chronic liver disease or metabolic syndrome has might have elevated ferritin levels is that i, I don't I, I don't that doesn't doesn't quite make sense to me or is it just inflammation uh, yeah. that, i will i will accept that one word answer <laughs> Okay, so one in three people with non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, NASH, are going to have iron overload. If you stain their liver biopsies, you will find iron there. And there's probably two reasons for this in NASH. One is chronic inflammation will influence the way that hepcidin uh, behaves in, in the liver. And then two, inflammation of the hepatocyte is bursting open these cells, spilling their contents into the blood, uh, and among them, ferritin. So you will see iron and ferritin as a function of liver cell death. 
But two out of every three people with alcohol-related liver disease will have elevated ferritin. And there are at least three reasons there. There's the inflammation, there's the hepatocyte cell death, and then there's the fact that alcohol is itself uh, a influence on hepcidin. It will increase hepcidin activity almost like it's been mutated. So you can see in people with alcohol use disorder not only elevated uh, ferritin, but also transferrin saturation. Now, you're not going to see transferrin saturation elevated in every single person with alcohol related liver disease, but you're going to see it a lot more commonly in uh, people with ALD than those with NASH. So back to our case here, we have this 53-year-old, as we said, diabetes, obesity, she has alcohol use disorder, and uh, we're, we're doing our basic labs on her. So the iron studies come back, uh, her ferritin is 1,667, her iron level is 170, the TIBC is 203, and that makes a transferrin saturation of 84%. What do you... What do you think about these results for this patient? And again, this is a, a patient who's hospitalized right now um, for abdominal pain, and she's got new ascites and cirrhosis. Well, obviously, we've addressed the idea that these, these, these labs can be affected in the acute setting. But if we come back to the basics about diagnosing hemochromatosis, if you have an elevated ferritin, and by that, I mean a ferritin greater than 200 for women, 300 for men, and you have this transferrin saturation that's greater than 45%, 50%, then the probability that this person has hemochromatosis is much higher. So if I was handed these labs, I would say, yeah hemochromatosis is on the list. But mm -hmm. there's two problems. One is that there are things that can influence transferrin saturation like alcohol or genetic hemochromatosis. And then there are things that can influence the ferritin, the acute phase of things. So you can have the genetic condition, but it might not be penetrant. So in people with genetic hemochromatosis, you will always see this elevated transferrin saturation, but you don't necessarily ever develop the iron overload. 